Gangono in Zalo Yelanga, which means the birthplace of the sun. Now, from the aerial shot of this place, you can see that this place is a circle. Actually, he circle, part of circle, part of circle here. Now, firstly, what you see, that tree, the rock that is broken into two, is our southern marker. Then straight down here, I'll take it down there, it's our eastern marker. Okay. Then under this tree here, it's our northern marker. There was this rock, the Minister of the Lake. That rock was taken out from this calendar in 1992 by the forestry company and they didn't know the significance of value They just saw this upright standing rock for some weird reason. They took it out. It used to stand here as well, which is also our western marker. And we also term that rock. It's either a stone man or a stone woman because of the way this rock is carved. Oh, okay. Now, Going back to the rocks themselves, this is what we call dolerite. Whereas the rocks that you see on the edge of the cliff are black reef quartzite, which is the bedrock of Capsule. So basically, uh, geologically speaking, was Capsule is sitting on a black reef quartzite, which makes this foreign to this area, or this dolerite foreign to this area. Mm -hmm. And we started scouting for a natural dolerite page as to where this might have been taken out from. We found it one and a half kilometers outside of the reserve. Mm -hmm. So we assumed that whoever built the structures harvested the rocks from there and he brought, and brought them here. Yeah. And then started carving shapes like the stone men to, to build this. And dolerite is the third hardest rock after diamond and granite. You get diamond, you get granite, then you get the dolerite. Now, there's a difference between a dolorite and a dolomite. Johannesburg, the bedrock of Johannesburg, is a dolomite. It's very soft. This is a volcanic rock. It has to come kilometers deep. Hmm. Whereas dolomite is some sort of a sedimentary rock. You can peel it off. It's easy to grind. It's easy to break. But this is the it's hardest. So we're still wondering as to how they actually managed to move them. But it's, it's sound that we, they, they might have used, levitating stuff, sound and resonance that might have been used to move these rocks. So hmm. Sound and resonance. And resonance, because everything has got its vibrating frequency. Okay. It's a matter of tapping into the frequency that resonates with you. And dolarite is magnetic. If you break this rock into half, you find these small shiny metals inside, which is, is called silica. And silica is the main ingredient when you are making a glass. Yeah. So yeah. it's not a miracle when you see an opera singer breaking a glass using sound. Yeah. It's that it actually, the, the opera singer might have reached the resonating sound of that particular glass and took it a, a notch up and then the, 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 the glass, glass breaks. Break. Oh, wow. It's not a miracle. We have seen that as well. So this is a, an, un, uh, an untapped pure silica. It's never been to any laboratory, so it's very low. It's high. Uh, yes, some years back I've been to Palaburwa. Mm. We were doing this refresher course for bedding tours just near the biggest stadium there. Right? So I saw these trucks full of dolarite and what's this other and cords. This little and I asked them, where are they taking this course? Because normally around Palabura, the mines there are manganese, not any other thing. Mm. They said they are going to take these rocks, melt it into a certain degree where it actually come, becomes liquid. They make silicon chips, the very same silicon chips to the computer, they are going to store data. Mm. They are coming from a rock. Mm. And even a mawash sometimes they put this course mm. to store it. So you can basically store information in rocks. You go to anybody's grave, it's always piled with rocks. Mm. You go there, talk to their ancestors, and your things goes well. The information is stored there. Jesus' mm. tomb was a rock. Yeah. You go there and pray. So rock can store information far much better than any other machine. Mm. So okay. coming back here, 
if you look from that rocks over there yeah there's a line of rocks it's like a circle over there there's a line of rocks going around going around touch under that tree that's the southern marker going around eastern marker northern marker so basically you have got your four cardinal points but if you stand here and start from there coming straight this this way mm. looks like it's another row mm. which could be a, an inner circle and then you kind of get the third circle in here so there's an old african Sangoma or Sanusi by the name of Credo Mutua. Yeah, I know Baba him. Credo Mutua was initiated right here in 1936 at the age of 16 years huh. as a young shaman. He doesn't call this area Adam's calendar. He calls it in Zalo Yelanga, which is the Zulu name for this area. Yeah. Probably Tsonga people have got another name for the, for the site. Sutu people, Bedi people and stuff and stuff. With African hmm. cultures, we give our sacred places our own names. So his only name is in Zalo Yelang La. and then probably Jenguba. And the information is still out there, even mm. if it's not written, it's oral. Because yeah. most of the shamans or the Sangomas never just talk about anything any, to anybody. They keep it as a secret. That's why the information is still out there. The liquid that we can uh, take out is what we share, but there's a lot of things that were happening here that we still need to dig out and find out. It's a mm. matter of getting the right people who actually knows about this place. Mm. Now, as an African people, the ancient Abantu people, yes. uh, before any religion, before any Christianity, any Hinduism, any whatever, these people will worship things like the moon, the stars, and the sun. Mm. Now to them, directions will mean different things. Mm. Firstly, north to them will mean north as in the direction, but it also represented up the sky where our creators came from. Yeah. Then south will mean south as in the direction, also down where our ancestors are. That's why if we talk to our ancestors, we face down and talk to them. But if we pray, we look up. Mm. Then east, that's where our sun always rises up, uh, where our God comes up. Hmm. to look after us. That's why it is in the direction. And West, you never bury an African people. In Shogu, I keep burying the nomad, but to hmm. the West. Most of you are to name. It leads to the Western side, like Shona Konilanga. So that should you rise up, if Kukonu Kuvuga, your face will be looking directly into the East, to hmm. the gods. Hmm. That's what the, 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 the direction means to them. And if you use about initiated, or you're going to be initiated around the year, your initiation has to be on the northern side. That's why we've got those rocks, which we think it must have been the place of initiation where people are take you through there. But before you even reach that area, you will have crossed three important lines. Now, if I'm similar, I'll show you the line. I'll say from yesterday, mm. probably until over Christmas, mm. from the 21st of December to almost the 23rd, 25th of mm. December. If you were to stand here like before sunset today or yesterday, the sun will have risen from the east and it will have set right between that rock with a small tree and that one. That's the longest day of the year. Our summer solstice, 21st of December. That's the longest day of the year, right between there. Oh, so it would, the sunset would be right. Yes, if you look the... at the sunset standing here, Umali It would go between those two. Yeah, between those two. That's oh. the longest day of the year. The big rock and the. Yeah, and that smaller, smaller rock right between mm. there. That's the longest day of the year. But if you are standing here on the 22nd or 21st and 22nd of September, which is the equal length of day and night, our spring equinox, the sun again rises from that side and it sits right behind where the stone man or the stone woman was, right behind this pointy rock over here. Oh, behind this pointy rock? Yeah, 
Okay. That's the equivalent of day and night. But standing here on the 21st of June, which is the shortest day of the year, the sun will rise again from this side and it will sit right between these two rocks over here. These two big rocks. These two big rocks over here. That's the shortest day of the year. Mm. And even by the look of the eye, standing here, this is the shortest distance from here to here. Yeah. Representing huh. the shortest day of the year. Okay. And that's the longest. The longest day distance. Of, the longest day of the year. And every time the sun goes down, mm. the shade of this rock is placed in this rock in front, as you can see now. This shade is the shade of this rock. Yes. It started at the bottom here and it will climb all the way up and probably move all the way to that side. As the seasons changes, then the movement of the shade also changes. That's why it's called the calendar. Whoever was using this calendar back then will mark or will write something as to when the shade falls this way. We actually doing this kind of ceremony or this kind of ritual. Or either we start planting, we start harvesting, and start, that's why we sometimes call it a sun dial or a calendar. Mm -hmm. The word Adam's calendar itself is derived from, we all know that Adam is the first person. Yes. And he, this is where he used to get his worksheet as to what actually must I do when the shade falls this. Because he never knew seasons. Mm -hmm. He has to be taught somehow that if the shade goes this far, you start doing this and this and this. That's mm -hmm. why it, we taken the name Adams and the calendar and then we mixed it up to the word Adams calendar. Mm -hmm. So this shadow, uh, please explain the shadow with what it means if it covers uh, the whole, this, okay, the whole that's, rock that's or what part still of the need rock. To figure out because oh, okay. we don't know actually what exactly happened here. As okay. I said earlier, that mm -hmm. we still need to get some people who might have had the knowledge, probably they might have carved something that peeled off, that erode off. Because the, the way this rock erodes, it erodes in only two ways, mm. which is the water and sand erosion. That will get this rock rough and bumpy like this. Okay. As it, as it drains, the soil actually bumps against it, it, it erodes the rock. Mm. But it also flakes off or it peels off like onion peels. As you can see, this will, as the air goes by, peel off. Mm -hmm. So that's how basically it erodes. So they might have had some features that peeled off here, mm. that got erased during the erosion of the rock. That's how actually we think that there must have been some calm. Because if you go to places like Stonehenge in England, mm. you find this lot of grooves, or, or like boobs around, or representing something, maybe, one one group would represent 10 or so years. So we think this must have been the same situation. Okay. But this is way older than the pyramids of Giza in Egypt. Mm. This is way older than the Stonehenge in England. Mm. Because if you go to Egypt, they will tell you maybe they are like, what, three or 4,000 or 6,000 years. Yeah, about 6,000, yeah. And uh, you go to Stonehenge in England, mm. they say nine or so, yeah. which is, Okay, I, I'm not against the Egyptians or the, the Egyptologist, which is not entirely correct. Let's take, for instance, Stonehenge in England. Not the, the, the new Stonehenge where it is now, the older Stonehenge. You can't directly put an age to a rock without any good information. We are not sure how old Adam's calendar is. We are, thinking 75 to 150,000 years. Based on what? You get to a dollarite, it's a slow eroding rock. You have to rely on the erosion rate of that rock. You can't carbon date a rock. Oh, so you can't carbon date a rock? You can't carbon date a rock. Okay. You have to get at least a crack of any rock. Like there's a crack there, you piece the crack together, you measure the erosion gap, you find out how slowly the, the erosion rate of that rock. If you know those things, you will be able to, to tell how long ago did this crack happen, not the entire rock, did the crack happen. Then you can put 
extra thousands of years of the rock while it was still intact. The more rounder the edges, the edges of the of the crack, the older the crack is. The sharper the edges, the newer the crack. Mm, yeah. yeah, so that makes that's sense. how you mm. can possibly get closer into dating an ancient site with mm. rocks, not with carbon dating. Yeah, this the stuff that you see, uh, like covering this rock, is what we call lichen. Lichen only grows one millimeter per year in good condition. Hmm. And this is layer upon layer of dead and alive lichen. You are not going to be able to scrape the layers and count the layer, the, the, the lichen, to carbon date a rock. So you have to rely on the erosion rate of that hmm. rock. So, the, okay, according to your observation, yes, um, from January to December, we're in summer now. Yeah. Uh, have you, what have you noticed in terms of the position of the shadow in winter, this shadow here now in winter? That, mm, yes, what we, I've noticed what now, good? the sun goes more that way. The shadow, the first, the tip here, mm. as, the, uh, as the sun goes, mm. this actually tip started tip. here. Yeah. And it climbed and it uh, actually expanded this way and the other hand it expanded that way. But more in winter. The shadow starts from the other side at the bottom, doing the same. Oh, from the other side? From the other side, the sun goes both this way, and the shadow is casted more from this side to this side. Oh, in, 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 winter. in winter. And now it's the sunset from towards this side, that, towards it's going that side. Around this time? Around this time of the year, yes. Ah. Now, uh, as I said, we on our way back, we're quickly going to stop on that. There's something that I need to show you which is also actually goes with, with Adam's calendar also. We hope it's a stone altar where people will do ceremonies and rituals on that area before coming to here. We believe that there's an ancient king that is buried there and people were actually doing some ceremonies. They are still living stuff over there. That is actually one of the important things. And this, this thing called the golden mean spiral, I don't know whether you know, which is a sacred geometry. Yeah. Now, a golden mean spiral work with the ratio. Like, for instance, a sacred geometry. If you can take a circle uh, this big, like your lens, yeah. you can only put six other circles of the same size around this, this, and this will be the seventh one, and still have got space to maneuver. That's how the ancient people would actually build their structures using the, 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 the sacred geometry. They never mm -hmm. used squares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like the stone circles. Of, of and, mm. That also goes in hand in hand, which is what it said, God created earth in six days. 